Hey everybody, it's Brian. Welcome to the 17th Python tutorial. It kind of screwed me up. My notes are, we smushed the last two together into one video. Um, so it kind of screwed me up a little bit here. But today, we're going to be talking about binary files and structures. And to kind of help me with that, we're going to look up on Wikipedia, the JPEG file format. You're all familiar with pictures out on the internet, like this cute cat. Everybody knows I love cats. So what really makes this file? I mean, how do we get that image on the screen? Well, you use what's called a structure. And I use JPEG on purpose because it's a very complex data structure. And if you just kind of scroll down here, you don't have to read all this, but just understand. Remember how we talked about, you know, hex FF is 255 in the last tutorial? That's the start of the image. So you have this nice structure here to work with. This is the common MPEG marker. And what this is, is just simply a data structure. You'll hear this in different languages. You'll hear it called um, a head, a header, a struct, a structure. Um, in Python, they're just structs. Uh, but they're very easy to work with in Python, and they're very painful to work with in some other languages. Now, what would you use a struct for? You can see how this is just denotes something. It's like the, the size, the progressive, whether it's got Huffman tables, quantitative or quanti quantization tables, define restart intervals, scans. I don't expect you to know any of this. What I'm getting at here is JPEGs are actually very complex. You'll have this 8x8 sub-image. That's right, sub-image, meaning a picture can actually be made up of other pictures. And those are structures that are read, you got it, from a binary file. Now you start to understand a little bit more about why binary files exist. You can pack a lot of data into them. Um, I almost say like 10 times the amount of data you could in a simple text file if you try to describe something. And you can have these beautiful structures which are very easy to work with. So we're going to actually not mess around with images because it's a little too complex for us right now. But we're going to make our own structure. So let's actually go in here, go new. Did I call that video 18? Ah, I did. This is video 17. My bad. Like I said, my notes just totally video 17. There we go. I'm going to call this struct. Now, first thing we want to do is I'm going to link, uh, link, geez, put a link in there for when you download my tutorial off my website that you can very quickly go out and read about this. But we're going to from struct import star. What's that? What that's really doing is we're taking the struct and we're importing everything inside of it, that struct package. We've done this before. so And we're going to make a string literal here, which is, of course, the path to our file. And yours will be whatever, you know, see my documents, etc, etc. Little quick rant. It just bothers me. I mean, I used to love Windows, and I got a Mac, and I got into Linux, and I just it just bothers me that Windows is different than everything else on the planet. It's like, why can't everything just be the same? So, with a structure, we need a format. What does that mean? It means you need to understand what you're putting into that structure. You don't just willy-nilly start throwing bits in there. I mean, crazy things will happen, right? So with a structure, you have two concepts, packed and unpacked. Pack is when you're packing it down to store it into a file or like into a box. Think of it that way. You're going to package it. And unpack, you, well, you guessed it, you're pulling it back out of that file and you're going to do something with it. So I'm going to say packed equals pack, and this is from the struct package. Now, first thing you need is the format. Then you need some data. You notice how there's a star there, star values. What that means is it accepts one or more. We can just go infinity and beyond. So if you ever see star values or star something, you know that you can have multiple in there. So we're just going to say 1, 2, 3, why not 3.14. So that's our structure. Integer, integer, decimal. That's how that reads. So integer, integer, decimal. 
That way, the struct package, particularly this pack function, knows exactly what we're storing. We're giving it a format to work with. If we gave it the incorrect format, it's going to start squawking, you're going to get all sorts of errors, and it's going to get ugly. This is a pretty dumbed down example of struct pack. You can find some very complex examples out on the internet, but I really wanted to dumb it down just so we understand what's going on here. Now we've got our packed structure here. So let's just print this out just to see what it looks like. I'm a big fan of show and tell. And you can see there's our structure here. Holy moly, look at that. That is a whole lot. What's going on there? Well, if you paid attention during your computer class, you know that an integer, at least on my platform, is four bytes. So there's one, two, and 3.14 is right there. So that's what's going on, is the packed function turns this into a binary string that's, you know, essentially Python's going to push it down onto the disk. So we're going to say print, writing file, let's get that out of there, put that there, just because I'm picky like that, with open str file, and you guessed it, we're going to binary write, as f. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to write this out. And we're going to say f dot write bytes because we need to convert this into you guessed it bytes packed. And what that does is it takes our binary string and converts it into you guessed it bytes, and then writes it down to the disk. Now we're going to print reading the file. Whoopsie! There we go. Reading the file. <laughs> We're going to say with open, and you guessed it, we're going to binary read. I'm going to uh, Europe this summer, so I'm kind of nervous about it. I'm going to go to France, specifically Paris, um, Italy, Spain, and I don't know where else we're going. It's kind of a surprise. We'll find out. But I'm going to be gone for two weeks, so it's going to be interesting. So we're going to just read. Now, you notice how from the last tutorial we put a 16 in here. This time we're not doing that. We're just going to read everything, the entire contents of the file in there. Now, if you knew the length of your structure, you would actually say only read a certain amount. For this example, I'm just going to read everything. And we're going to say unpacked equal. And you guessed it, we're going to unpack that. Needs a format. and we're going to give it the buffer and then we're just going to print probably help if I actually like did something with that there we go Whew, let's see if this thing runs alright so we've written the file we're reading it back and we've, sure enough we get you guessed it 1 2 and 3.14 nice let's see what that looks like out on the disk Mm -hmm. And there is our beautiful file in all its glory. It may look different on your screen, but that is the gist of it all. So that is a struct. Now you know the basics of why you would use a struct. Now you can think of certain projects that you would do, like if you wanted to store like uh, somebody's employee ID and their age or something like that, you'd make a nice structure and you could you know, pump these out to the file. That's all for this tutorial. I hope you found this educational and entertaining. Thank you for watching, and be sure to visit my website, voidrealms.com, for the source code for this and other tutorials.